Okay. Let's slide over to my NFL week one recap. An awesome day of football. Um, I've been so excited for this week and really just got a couple appetizers, even got in on a couple college football games, but really no one does a day of sport like the NFL, man. It, it's so well put together, the presentation, the gambling focus, the fantasy focus, that being able to have a channel that literally just rotates through and shows you the best parts of each game and keeps you up to date with all the games happening at the same time. They need a, a red zone for the NBA, for the NHL. I, I just, I, it's just a sport that's conducive to having this sit down and just absorb content in, in a giant wave. And uh, I was loving it. So I'll go in here with some of the, the key takeaways I've had, not just from today when the actual games are playing, but a little bit earlier in the week, starting with the Baltimore Ravens, uh, who are set to play tomorrow night against the Las Vegas Raiders. They are getting obliterated by injuries right now. This is a team that that seems like they're the team that's going to have the, the worst injury this season. Uh, they lose their second string running back now after their first string running back. Dobbins out for the season. Gus Bus, uh, Gus Edwards is, is injured and out for a couple of weeks. And Marcus Peters as well. They're uh, one of their top Pro Bowl cornerbacks. Comes out with an injury as well. So this team is is losing some of its top tier talent. And I think they're really, really going to struggle, especially with Pittsburgh getting a massive upset win against Buffalo today on the road. Um, no one really had them picked. In fact, a lot of teams picked Pittsburgh to regress and actually struggle this season. A lot of money on Buffalo to actually be the top team in the AFC this year. Uh, and Pittsburgh's defense came into Buffalo. Uh, the crowd was Super Bills Mafia out in full force, and the Steelers' defense shut them down. Uh, they sat back a lot on Josh Allen, and Buffalo's running game is probably the weaker part of their offense, and they were able to really contain that. And then any time in passing situations, they were draping themselves over the receivers and making Josh Allen run around like a chicken with his head, head cut off. So um, a really outstanding performance from the Steelers and a huge win for them. Um always amazing to start one and oh and especially in this extra game season 17 game season now that's a huge one to get against probably a team that everyone had pegged to be one or two in your conference uh i know i skipped a bit but we'll go back in the timeline to thursday uh opening game of the season the tampa bay buccaneers and the dallas cowboys one of the best opening games we've had in a couple of decades now an absolute shootout, both Brady and Prescott going over 360 passing yards. I think Prescott went over 400 in the game. CeeDee Lamb could have had a lot more yards, but he finished with over 100. Um, Amari Cooper, who I'm dubbing my, my fantasy performer of the week, had 38.4 fantasy points, two touchdowns in that game. Gronk with two touchdowns, looking a little bit like vintage Gronk. We got a couple of spikes there. And, and Brady somehow at whatever, 87 years of age, still slings it around and is looking like he he's 10 years younger than he should be. Um, an incredible performance by both teams. Dallas really showing that their offense is unstoppable because that Bucks defense is a force to be reckoned with, but they put up points. But Tampa Bay just able to squeak it out. Last second field goal, maybe a questionable bit of offensive pass interference that wasn't called, but wouldn't have it any other way in, in a big sports game to have a questionable call to start the season. Um, that's how you know that the NFL is back and uh, a big win for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as they look to mount their campaign to defend their Super Bowl championship this season. Uh, some other quick notes from this week, um, I guess like the, the the worst beat of the day would have to be if you are a San Francisco better. Uh, they were eight and a half point favorites against the Do Detroit Lions and were up by 28 in the third quarter. Um, and the Lions came back in just roaring back, excuse the poor dad pun there, uh, with a couple touchdowns, a successful onside kick then to bring it within uh, 16 and then they have an unsuccessful onside kick, but then the next play uh, 
Debo Samuel fumbles, Lions recover, they get down the field, they score again, eight point game, uh, and just a brutal beat for those anyone who had bet uh, the 49ers minus eight and a half because your bet was looking so good at the beginning of the first half and then just fell apart into shambles and yeah, cursing the Detroit Lions, but that's one of the biggest, probably that's one of the best moments of the season that Detroit's going to have because their team is still in a rebuilding mode as it's been for 50 years. Um, yeah, it was, that was just a funny moment for me. I had to, I did note that down. Moving along here, um, probably shocking for you, Max. I don't know if you saw this, the New Orleans Saints playing in Jacksonville uh, as the home team. Jameis Winston, the starting quarterback, they thumped the Green Bay Packers. And Aaron Rodgers looked washed up, to be frank. 38-3, to Winston was throwing it all over the field. Kamara doing his thing. He averages, he averages a touchdown a game, which is unheard of uh, in the NFL. And the Rodgers, couple of really poor interceptions, and the Saints were all over them. People thought the Packers would actually have a bit of a home game because their fans travel well and the Saints weren't playing at home. Um, and they just got out, went out there and got destroyed. It was quite shocking, really. Um, and it kind of changes the perspective that people may have on what Green Bay season looking like because they were back to back NFC championship contenders. Uh, but a loss like this reframes what what their ceiling could be on the season. Yeah, you've got to think the past seven, eight months Rodgers has had is not conducive to your best playing ability. Yeah. Last couple of notes here. Uh, we're not going to get to Sunday night football uh, as the pod takes place just a little bit before that, but a big win uh, for the Miami Dolphins in Foxborough in New England. <laughs> Uh, lots of hype on the Pats train this season. I even hyped them up on our last show, picking them to make the playoffs. Mac Jones looked really good. Uh, their defense is back in full force, and Miami marched right into the Lions' den and played stout defense and got a couple big plays from Jalen Waddle, uh, from Miles Gaskin, from Mike Gesicki, and and Tua didn't show the full potential that people are still looking for from him, but he managed the game enough and they made enough plays that they steal a big road win against the Patriots and really smushing the hopes of Pats fans who are ready to be back in business after a year off. Uh, also in Kansas city, the Browns, a big scare put on the chiefs up 22 10 at halftime and the Chiefs have just wrapped things up there with a 33-29 victory. If you were on the Browns, uh, minus five and a half, congrats to you. It was a great bet. Sharp betters have been all over it this week. It started around a touchdown uh, favorite for the Chiefs and, and slowly moved down over the week as more and more people backed the Browns. But they weren't able to win outright, uh, but still a good value play there as this Browns team is full of a lot of talent, and I think they're going to have a really successful season. Last but not least, shout out my Broncos. Big win uh, against the Giants this afternoon on the road. That's important for our hopes to make it to the playoffs. And um, Jerry Judy, a guy who I was really excited for last year as our top uh, first-round pick at wide receiver, found out he had a high ankle sprain today during the game, so he's going to be out probably two months which is a huge bummer, but I think this team has still has more than enough weapons that they can be plucky. And as we saw today, a big win in New York, and hopefully they can keep that ball rolling as well. Go Broncos, go. Um, that's it for my week one recap. Uh, already knocked down my fantasy performer. I guess the two games now, based on what happened today that I'm excited for, uh, next week, Tennessee versus Seattle, the Titans losing to the Cardinals. Chandler Jones had five sacks in today's game. Pretty remarkable performance from him. They need to get back on track because right now the Houston Texans are winning the AFC South, uh, which is what no one was expecting. Um, so they need a big win and they're going to have to go to Seattle and Russell Wilson already starting to stat pad his campaign, never received an MVP vote. Um, could this be the year that he changes that? So that'd be a big game. And then New Orleans Saints, after their statement win against Packers, playing against the Carolina Panthers, who also beat the New York Jets in Sam Darnold's revenge game. 
uh, I think these two teams are going to match up well as, as well. So looking forward to those two next week. And that's going to do it for my football fan cave at this time.